Engraving. Engraving is actually a very important factor to consider when you're looking at a fine English gun. It has become increasingly important and it determines the value of a gun to a greater extent today than perhaps it ever has done. I'm going to be taking you through a little bit of what you should be looking for and giving you a little bit of the history of gun engraving as far as fine English sporting guns are concerned. So here we have a pair of guns, a pair of muzzle loading guns built for Prince Albert, who was the, uh, the husband of uh, Queen Victoria. Um, they're built by Charles Lancaster, very good quality London guns. Um, but as you can see, they're quite modestly engraved. Fine scroll work that was typical of the period. An English gentleman's gun. It wasn't over the top, it wasn't showy. It would have fine scroll engraving, but the distinctive lines and the quality of the gun could easily be seen. We have another gun, this time a rifle, 0.500 hammer rifle, black powder, by Purdy again, built for Queen Victoria's son, the Prince of Wales, later King Edward VII. Now this was his own personal rifle, and as you can see, it wasn't intended as a presentation piece. It is a standard fine scroll engraving that you'd expect to find on any Purdy gun of this period, and it is very much of the style that you would expect. Very discreetly engraved and finished, but of very high quality. As time went by, engraving styles evolved. By the time we get into the 1880s, the Purdy house style had become evident and fine rose and bouquet scroll engraving is the typical engraving that you'll find on a Purdy gun and it remains the standard Purdy engraving to the present day. Again, a good full coverage, fine scroll work, fine rose bouquets and just a very attractive and very discreet pattern. All engraved by hand to the very highest quality of this maker. There are variations on this style of engraving. We have another Purdy here. This one's a little bit older, but from about 1885. This incorporates some fairly naive game scenes within the scroll engraving where the rose bouquets would be. Usually this work was either carried out by the in-house engraver or by another engraver, Harry Kell, who was well known at this period for specialising in this type of work. And this would be a standard fancy engraving option at Purdy at the time, but again, not terribly, terribly popular and not a major factor, but in today's market, it marks this gun as being quite distinct. It's quite rare to find this engraving. But does a gun really need a lot of engraving? Well, let's have a look. Here we have a very attractive example by London Sporting Park. It's their Watts gun. Again, very little engraving on it at all. Just engraved a little bit around, around the edges of the locks, the maker's name and address signed on the rib. But as you can see, it's still a very attractive gun, and sometimes less is more. But unfortunately, as far as values are concerned, this gun is probably worth in the market today, probably 40, maybe 50% less than it would be worth if it had had a full coverage of scroll engraving. Personally, I like this style very much. I enjoy the simplicity and the lovely clean look that it has. It allows the natural beauty um, of the gunmaker's art to shine through. As time went by, engraving styles evolved. North American orders suddenly became very important as the wealthy Americans came into the market and started ordering guns elaborately finished, elaborately engraved. Ken Hunt was really the first um, celebrity name engraver. He was a young engraver who'd been working at Purdy. He was apprenticed to Harry Kell, a great engraver of the previous generation. He introduced a new style of sculpturally heavily chiselled, heavily carved work. He excelled at game scenes, gold embellished work everything that the American market loved. He really became the most famous in British engraver during the 60s, 70s and 80s. He ended up working as a freelance engraver for every, every maker. John Wilkes, a London maker, was one of them. And we have a particularly fine example that we sold earlier on in the year, which was engraved by him, beautifully engraved with some wonderful game scenes. The gun took five years to, to complete. Exceptional work. And Ken really is the father of modern gun engraving. In the modern era, both the traditional engraving styles and the newer styles have remained extremely popular. I mean, here we have a beautifully engraved Watson Brothers 20 bore over and under gun with highly detailed fine scroll work, a full coverage engraving, a typical house style for this maker. These styles are popular, but also the high art styles um, where the gun is treated as an art form are also very popular. We have an absolutely unique and exceptional gun here, engraved by the Scottish engraver Malcolm Appleby. This is the Phoenix gun. It is engraved with all of the textural 
bits of sculptural feathery form of the mythical phoenix. We have the eyes and the beak here. And this gun is something that was built really as a work of art. With all of that sculptural detail, it really is you know, breathtaking work. In the modern era today, the majority of guns in use are essentially machine made. But it is possible today to give the appearance of a highly embellished, highly engraved surface to the metal with the aid of a machine. Here we have probably the most popular gun in the field today. It is a Beretta 687EEL. Very familiar to the majority of you. As you can see, it has very elaborately figured timber. The engraving, as you can see, beautifully detailed game scenes. But everything isn't quite as it first appears. This gun is engraved by a machine. The scenes are rolled on. Some of it is picked out by hand to correct any mistakes or errors that the machine has made. But this is essentially engraved by a machine. It is not engraved by man. Um, it allows a very high level of finish to be applied with really very little cost or expense to the, uh, the cost of manufacture. Um, and this has been taken to another level entirely um, by laser engraving, which has been relatively new to the market. So here we have a pair of guns by Longthorn, an innovative English manufacturer. Um, they've only been in business, oh, 10 years or so. They use a lot of technology. The barrels are made out of one solid piece of metal, um, CNC machined. A lot of technology has gone into the development of this gun. And the engraving that you can see here gives all of the impression of being hand engraving of the highest quality. It's a beautiful design impeccably finished but it is actually engraved by laser it's a computer program has engraved this gun and this is a, you know, has been a great move forwards for the manufacturers that can design a pattern and then repeat it ad infinitum and easily as well embellish it or alter it to a customer's desired specification this gun particularly here we have the owner's labrador has been engraved on the base of the gun so as a summary that's a little brief history of gun engraving just really scratches the surface, no pun intended. It's all about personal taste. You may well prefer a gun that is plainly finished. You may well want something that is very showy, very elaborately engraved and obviously expensive. Um, at the end of the day, the choice is yours. Mm -hmm.